Released March 1st, 2022 on the Xbox One, Series X, PS4, and 5, and PC by developer Piranha Bytes and publisher THQ Nordic. Elix 2 is a sequel to 2017's Elix. Whether you played part 1 or not though, you may just find something to appreciate here. And if you're like me, haven't sat with a decent RPG in a while, Elix 2 may be just what you needed to get back in the saddle. Thanks to the publisher for the review key. Magalon, home to a civilization of millions. Let's hop straight to the story. We all know gameplay is top priority, but one of the main ingredients in any successful RPG is its story. We return to Magalon, years after our protagonist Jax defeated the hybrid in his first outing, but a new threat has appeared. A threat Jax saw coming, did his best to warn folks, but like they said in the intro, how easily people forget. How people quickly slip back into their routines, uncomfortable comfort zones, pretending like nothing happened, even if what happened was simply a precursor to their very undoing. This new threat descends from above, in the form of an alien race, with terraforming Magalon as their primary objective. At least so it seems. Jax turned to a life of seclusion, out of disgust with society, and one fine day, returning from hunting, his house is attacked with the rest of the planet. He flees, ends up in a skirmish with a few of these invaders, gets knocked out cold, and rescued by a stranger. This stranger asks for help, help he's willing to receive after you've found and secured your son. In the search for your son after this attack, you meet up with his mom, an old flame. She explains to you that the stranger is actually the antagonist from part one, now tamed by the ravages of war and time. The hybrid machine is a thing of the past. And there's nothing I can do about it. He asks you to help him build a new alliance, a resistance group to take out the alien menace. He calls this group the Sixth Power. Okay, let's see what group of freaks you put together at the Bastion. With your help and allies you recruit, a new headquarters is made at a place called the Bastion. Now your hub of sorts. Now, I never played part 1, and I'm only 15 hours in, so my interpretation of the story may not be the most accurate, and to be perfectly honest with you, I see some twists and betrayals looming in the near future. It's more than that. I think he might have even called them here somehow. The story here is pretty good. One of the main hooks the games got in me. Even when I tried to stop playing, I just couldn't. Until after a while, I realized how massive this game probably is, and it would maybe take me a whole lot longer to get this review out after every reviewer and their moms have already released theirs. I love the way this game looks. Now I'll agree, the visuals do have a dated look to them. But it's not because I'm reviewing this on last gen. I've seen many other Xbox One and PS4 games that look significantly better. However, I'm not a graphics whore. I love great visuals as much as the next person, but I'm willing to settle for good instead of great or mind-blowing. If it looks good, it looks good, and the visuals here in Elix 2 look really good, early last gen aesthetic or not. The people who look like shit. I saw a few glitches, pop-ins, and overall inconsistencies, but Elix 2 is way too good of a game for me to be focusing on that. I don't need a lecture from you. The faces were the most noticeable for me though. They had that mannequin thing many games of the 360 and PS3 era suffered from. Not enough on the facial expressions, and I also found that age wasn't interpreted or represented well here either. An NPC may comment on someone being like an old bag, but when I met the person, she didn't seem old at all. Why don't you crawl up that old woman's ass? You seem to like it there. I must commend Piranha Bites on the lip syncing. It's not spot on, but I do appreciate the attention paid to such detail. The nail was made in a forge, and the propaganda flyer has a drink menu on the back. There's this glitch, and it depends on whether or not they patch it by the time you're watching this, but a glitch where every time the game autosaves, it lags for a second. Only a second, but really noticeable. And for that second, well, it's a second of broken immersion. The camera also needs some help. This was most noticeable during combat, especially melee combat. <laughs> The sound works for me, the score is amazing, keeps me invested, and the sound effects like the footsteps are also detailed enough. The voice acting however was definitely B-movie grade. No one sounds top tier or A-list, not even Jax. You look like shit, Jax. What we're presented with are tryhards. Some for the better, some for the worst, but all certainly B-tier voice actors. That's our fucking business. Gameplay. This is some pickup 
and never put down until the end kind of gameplay we're talking here. Elix 2, if you're a fan of the genre, will have you parking all your other games to make room for this one. Flaws and all, it has this charm to it, this irresistible charm. It's like an RPG fan's dream. All the required elements are here and intact. Character progression? Check. Now, patience is the name of any RPG, but while you may be able to get away with some hothead run and gun tactics and others, that will not fly here. You're going to need to take the time, do some grinding to level up, as when you start out, you're basically a shell of jacks from part one, washed up and nearly giving up on life with perhaps the only thing keeping you going being your son. So you'll find that your first encounters may not exactly swing in your favor. <laughs> and you'll be running away a lot, but keep at it, almost like you would in a roguelike. Find creative ways to take out some enemies without the bare knuckles toe-to-toe -to -toe approach. You may have to do some of that bobbing and weaving, float like a butterfly stuff before you're able to match most of what comes at you pound for pound. You're given a jetpack early, and this helps, but is balanced, so you're not able to spam it for your entire journey. This too can be leveled up, and gives you something more to work towards regarding character development. Then you should go. While things are still quiet around here, it won't stay that way for long. Elix 2 is a game that's in no rush, and neither should you be. This isn't Call of Duty. Good things come to those who are patient, diligent, and committed. Is that so? Well, let's see. You're able to level up your attributes. This includes strength, constitution, dexterity, intelligence, and cunning. You can level up your abilities. This would be your combat skills, survival skills, crafting, personality, and your knowledge from the factions. A berserker, alb, morcon, outlaw, or cleric. And you can also upgrade your jetpack as mentioned. Could you teach me something? There are also trainers, specialists in various fields that you'll need to chat with to gain improved abilities. You've got a lot of room in your inventory. A lot of stuff here I barely know what to do with just yet. But other than your regular healing potions, you can use things you found, the meat from some of the wildlife you cut down to cook at campfires. They won't heal you as fast as knocking back a health drink, but they work well. Elix 2 is a true RPG, and in true RPG fashion you have many choices. One being the choice to join one of the factions, the clerics, the outlaws, the berserkers, the Morcons, or return to your original faction that turned on you in part one, the Albs. He's going to want to talk to you. He's the only one who can initiate new berserkers into the faction. Or you could forget all these jokers and go it alone. This route is by no means the path of least resistance and is ill-advised. But ill-advised or not, with only 15 hours in, I can tell none of these factions are for me. So far, they all have some questionable traits and characteristics. Are you fucking kidding me? The Berserkers, at first, seemed like the best bet, but I quickly came to the realization that they had this Babylon oppressive political vibe to them. I met their leader. I know Rat from way back. I mean, his name alone set off red flags. I was sent on a mission to find some rebels, and lo and behold, as I found these rebels, I was given reason to suspect the Berserkers even more. And the game goes on like this, while not completely believable, it did a great job of pulling me in, having me question motives, loyalties, and even my own integrity. Patience is our most powerful weapon. Soon, soon the heretics will atone for their sins. Well played, Piranha Bites. Well played. He hasn't been here a minute and he's already teacher's pet. I consider Elix 2 a slow and methodical burn, but with patience and enough interest, and of course some love for either the genre, the series, or a compelling story, you'll be able to see it through as this game and story builds up and flourished into what I can only call an epic experience. I respect that. Yes, I'm not even halfway through, but first impressions do make an impact, and so far, so good. I am impressed. You'll always be welcome here. We also have a choice dialogue system when interacting with NPCs. Having this system is always appreciated in any game where the choices actually make a difference, but I found with most things that offer these choices, not just games, but like YouTube, when you're not interested in a video, it used to give you one simple choice, interested or not. Now when you click not interested on a YouTube video, it asks you a bunch of questions. Now the thing with these choices YouTube presents, as with games, this multiple choice answering system leaves way too much room for improvement. The choices presented aren't always the ones I would select. So I'm left with a take it or leave it vibe, which I guess is excusable as technology isn't at that point yet where the questions and answers given and accepted by an AI is infinite. But there were many instances where I would have liked to respond with something else other than what's presented. 
Where's Dex? Where's my son? You're also given the option to choose your path, be it the path of good or the path of destruction. This depends greatly on many of the choices you make when interacting with NPCs. Tell me what I want to know, unless you want me to kick your fucking teeth in. The controls are fine, with a few misses. It bothers me sometimes when I'm trying to be precise with my movements, but Jax has this thing that feels like unrealistic built-up momentum when he's running. It feels like he can't exactly stop on a dime. You let the control stick go, and he moves at least one more step. Kinda like Luigi. I hate that nonsense. I understand that in reality, if we're running, we can't just suddenly freeze in place. But that's not what it feels like here. It does not feel like real physics. It feels like not so great video game physics. And the jump button and crouch buttons are the same. I found that weird. I know it's more of a hop, but still, weird choice. And those that talk shit should shut the fuck up. It also seems a part of the choice system is the inclusion of recreation and downtime. I was able to check out a Billy Idol concert. That seemed pretty left field but I'm not complaining. While I'm the kind of player who wants to stick to the main path and get the job done as soon as I can, I didn't mind that or the side quests offered. All right, I'll take care of the rats. Some of these side quests seemed purposeful. While some I thought were just side quests proved integral to your overall progression, all your quests, main and optional, are listed. It took me a while to get used to that interface, as everything you do is manual. You won't complete a quest, then the next one in line pops up. There's a very non-linear approach to everything, Sometimes I felt like the camera could have had an auto option, but it didn't. Either that, or I simply didn't figure out how to get that done. There's also a fast travel option, done by unlocking these teleporters found all across the map. So, I could call this a review in progress, as I know there's a lot more to do, a whole lot more leveling up before I see what my character is truly capable of and many more twists and turns with this story's development, and tons of things I probably neglected to cover. I can't promise that I'll make a follow-up video, but hey, if you guys would like to see more, let me know, as I know there are a lot more Elix 2 videos out there, with more info, more views, and done by more qualified players. This is simply my small contribution to a great game that deserves the love. Elix 2 is an amazing, gripping, addictive, well-designed RPG, despite its flaws, and I give it two thumbs up. Huh. Maybe you're not the asshole everyone thinks you are. Thank you for watching. If you like my content, feel free to like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell while you're at it. Let's say I found a way to offend your fragile sensibilities with this one though. Then, the only logical course of action would be to hit them hate buttons, with a dislike or an unsubscribe. Either way, I won't hold it against you. Our game is never over. May Oblivion find you.